And now, Pastor Gloria, the prayer warrior of our Lord, our Righteousness House of Prayer. Prayer call 310-418-8189. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to clean up what I messed up. Yeah, I'm starting my life all over again. Yes, uh, I'm going to clean up mm, what I messed up. Yeah, I'm starting my life all over. Praise the Lord, saints. This is Pastor Gloria, the prayer warrior. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Let me just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus I pray for everyone that's listening and looking at me this afternoon. Bless them coming in, Father, and bless them going out. Father, we ask, Father God, that you will heal anyone that's afflicted in their body. Jehovah Rapha, you are our healer. Father, you sent your word and you heal them. Father, I send the word of God over anyone that is sick and afflicted in their body in your name. And Lord, we pray for all those who had this horrible thing that happened and in um, Valentine's Time Day in Florida, Lord, comfort the family's heart, Father. Oh, Father, be with the people, Father God. We're going through so many wickedness in this world, Lord. But, Father, you're the one that can comfort us through the Holy Ghost and give us peace, Lord, that passes all understanding. What the devil meant for evil, Lord, turn it around for good because you said all things work together for good for those who love Christ Jesus. And I know there's a lot of people out there that loves you, Lord. We all went through so many things in our life and we didn't understand it. But I understand, Lord, that all the things that happened in my life, deaths and people getting killed and different things. I I found out when I leaned on you, Lord, that you was there to help me. And then I understood I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I pray for those in authority, Lord, that we might have a peaceful life. I pray for the president all the way down, Father God, that they will do what is right according to your people. And Father, I also pray for all men that they might be saved. Father, you see, which did no man perish, but have eternal life. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, deliver Israel all its troubles, and protect their borders in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, today, I am the co-host. And the Holy Ghost is my host today. And we're going to talk about prayer, how you can overturn certain generation curses in your family and uh, through prayer. And, you know, it's just nothing impossible with God. You know, I just thank God how you can overturn things. Now, last week, a week before, I talked about the different courts, about the courts in heaven. And so now, you know, Jesus is our lawyer. God the Father is our judge, and the Holy Ghost is our witness. So when you go before the throne of grace in prayer, and you have the right to come boldly before the throne of grace because it ripped, the veil ripped where you didn't need no priest, you didn't need a pastor glory to prayer or anybody to come before the throne of grace. You have the right to come boldly before the throne of grace. It doesn't matter who you are. How rich you are, how poor you are, no matter what race, creed, or color you are. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can boldly become before the throne of grace. Isn't that wonderful? And even if you don't, if you just call on Jesus, you really don't understand. You still have that right to because in doing that, you'll come to know the King and King and the Lord and Lord. You know, one time uh, some years ago, uh, my brother... uh, was shot up okay he was shot up with some bullets and about 10 or 15 bullets I had told him to go in but um inside when I left but it was a party was giving a party for my granddaughter she was off to college now she's that teacher that we prayed for and getting ready to become a professor thank God for my little grannies they're doing so good anyway um the some people came by and shot him up and it was also my son-in-law. I didn't. I don't have his pants, but I had his pants for a long time. Where he also got shot up. But the 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 important thing I want to tell you is that it was overturned because death was at the door, but it could not penetrate because of prayer. And I'm gonna show you this shirt, and then I'm gonna tell you what happened, how this all came about. 
This right here is the shirt, and I know I've shown it a lot of times, but maybe some of you just now seeing and knowing about this. You know, here's the shirt. And as you can see, these are holes. You see the holes? I'm going to stick my hand through the hole so you can see. That's one hole, two hole, three hole, four holes, five holes, okay, six holes. There's some right there. Now, these are bullet holes. And then here's some more right here. Uh, so I think this is seven, eight, nine, and then here's ten. So that's ten right there. And there's some more someplace. But anyway, these are bullet holes. Now, I never got this shirt washed just in case somebody want to challenge me. If I decide to let them challenge me, through, they want to check to see if these was really bullet holes. He had his shirt buttoned up. And not a bullet touched him. He had the bullet holes, but, the, but a bullet did not touch him. So let's go back. How, this, how did this happen? And I talked to the Lord about this. Uh, some time ago, my mother... She was a prayer warrior as, as well. She would pray all the time for her children. So when my mother went on to be with the Lord, I began to also walk in her steps. I also became a prayer warrior. So thank God for that. So as my mother and her mother before that, who was the elder of the church, and my grandfather, which was a bishop of the church. So these are prayer and people. So now I'm telling you, when you pray and you have praying people in your family, it goes from one generation to another generation. It don't have to be your mother and father. It could be your cousin, your niece, or whoever in your family, or maybe a good friend, somebody, or your pastor, or someone who's been praying for you. It don't have to even be nobody that's in the ministry. It could be somebody that's just praying, okay, for you. So about 15 years ago, I had just... Uh, had my uh, building, my first little building, because I was having a uh, prayer in my mother's home for about seven years when the uh, my pastor told me I was a pastor and uh, I had to confirm it and everything. But for seven years, I just prayed eight, nine, 12 hours a day. Uh, the Lord took me off my job and I had to completely depend on the Lord for everything. Money, shoes, it didn't, it didn't matter. Everything I had to depend for God for, and he always provided for seven years. And then after the seven years, the Lord said that I was a pastor. Now, uh, my pastor had already told me that I was, but it was really confirmed after seven years of praying in my mother's home and my mother praying with me and mother mostly, uh, also who's now 101, be 102 uh, next year. And she's in her right mind. Praise God for mother mostly. Anyway. I, after my mother had went home to be with the Lord in 1994, I started in 1995 on cable as being Pastor Gloria, the prayer warrior. I would pray eight, nine, 12 hours, sometimes 24 hours inside, right in front of the altar. Just would pray, pray, pray. And before I even had an altar, I would pray at home. Just pray, pray, pray all the time in my heavenly language. Well, one day when I was at the church and I was praying and it had been about 24 hours and I didn't have no sleep and I wasn't even tired. I was just, I was just had so much energy, you know, something happened. A supernatural thing happened to me. Uh, this entity came into the church. His wings was 12 foot long on each side, 12 feet long, and it was pure white. His face glowed and inside of his face he had a crown and his eyes looked like crystals but his body was shaped like a horse and he had a sword in his hand that was about 12 foot up uh, 12 feet long which glowed and as I was praying I seen these words that was coming against our family because of a uh, disobedience uh, drugs um, witchcraft, um, alcoholism. I've seen all of this in the atmosphere, uh, being a fornicator, a liar, you name it. It was all in my family. And I know a lot of us can identify what I'm talking about because there's nobody family that lacks sin. We all have sin and come short of the glory of God. But besides that, I was looking at it. And as I was praying, this is when this Sherman, Sherman, came in, which I didn't know was a cherubim. I didn't know what it was. 
came in and I wasn't fearful of anything. And he had this sword. And as I was praying, uh, some new words came up. Like I was praying in the spirit, but the words was where I could see what I was saying. And it was saying, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Lord, protect us, Lord. Lord, help us to help everybody in my family to come to know you as Lord and uh, G, uh, Lord and Savior. Lord, you said we come boldly before the throne of grace, Lord, that you will hear us, Lord. Father, I'm standing in the gap like my mother did, Father, and I know her prayers are still here too. Lord, I ask, Father God, that you will have mercy and grace with my family, Lord. Father, you said you wish that no man perish but have eternal life. Now, this is what I was saying in the spirit realm. Because in, 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 while I was praying in my heavenly language, I was seeing what I was saying. The words was coming right up at me. Now, I also seen some other words. Let me have their soul. They're thief. They're robbers. They're fornicators. They're liars. You said these people will not enter into the kingdom of God. I seen those words that came that was against our family. They they drank, they smoked drugs, they're prostitutes, they're pimps. Let me have their souls. They belong to me. I seen those words. Well, as I was praying, <clears throat> the seraphim came with this sword. And as I was uh, saying, he began to erase with that sword the words that had came against my family to the throne of grace. Because see, Satan is accusing. He go to and fro accusing the brethren. When you come before the throne of grace, he comes also to lie on you, just like he did Job. And, uh, he, and, jo and the Lord told him, he said, uh, have you uh, thought about Job, my servant, who's perfect at heart? He said, I can't touch him because there's a hedge of protection around you. Remove that and I, he will curse you to your face. So can nobody do anything to you now unless God allow it for a season and for his glory. Okay. So as he was erasing the words and the accuser of uh, accusing us, accusing our family and trying to keep a hold of this, our family, we was bound. Things was just always happening to us. Um, the words that I, that I had been praying and my mother was rewritten. So what was coming against us, that was a judgment of, of the devil trying to have uh, a judgment against us and trying to take the souls of our family was rewritten because of the prayer of the saint, which I was, I was a saint. Now, how did this work in also in the courts of the heavenlies? As I said, I am, I, I, I am one of the saints, and I'm a prayer warrior and an intercessor too. And as I went before the throne of grace, Satan also went. So there's my lawyer, which is Jesus Christ, and he's handling my case. All right? And so here comes Satan uh, accusing, look, you, you let me have him. Let, let me, I'm saying him because I'm talking about this one particular situation. There's others, other situation. Let me have his soul. You know, he's an alcoholic. He's a, he's a adulteress. He's a liar. He's a thief. He smoked cocaine. Let me have, you said these people, this is an abomination. These, these things cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Let me have it. So I have the right. But Jesus speaks up as you're praying in agreement with his prayers, because he's sitting on the right hand of the Father right now, interceding on our behalf. So now you're in agreement with the Father. He said, Well, two or more is there, what there I'm in the midst. One could put a thousand of flight, and two could put ten thousand of flight. Now we're talking about overturning, overturning the situation. We have we are appealing this court. We are we are appealing the situation. There was a judgment against us, and now we're gonna uh, overturn this situation. As the devil is accusing us, the Lord Jesus is saying this, but Father, I took every sin to the cross. The thief, the robber, the, the, the incest person who committed incest, the whore, Lord, everyone, I took every sin to the cross, the murderer. I took it to the cross. 
And Lord, my blood cleanse them from that sin. Can you not forgive them, Lord? You said that you would, Father, in my name. Now, the devil don't stop off, stop with that. He's going to keep right on accusing you. So as I was praying, Jesus was praying. Now, when Jesus left, he didn't leave us comfortless. He also sent somebody else to pray for us, and that's the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost also is praying, and that's where he become our witness. Now, God the Father is our judge. Jesus is our lawyer, and the Holy Ghost is our witness. So as Jesus is confirming his word with the Father, the devil is still trying to say, no, let me have, well, I can't have this person, so let me have this other person, so, and this and that. That's what he's steadily trying to get, uh, get on in there like he did Job. Then the Holy Ghost, then, no, then Jesus calls on the Holy Ghost, just like he called on the Holy Ghost before when he left. He said, it's expedient that I must go, for if I don't go, I cannot send the Holy Ghost. And at Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came within 50 days, uh, 10 more days after uh, uh, Jesus had left. He walked here on earth 40 days and 40 nights. 10 days later, the Holy Ghost came like a roaring uh, sound, like a sonic boom. And then, and then everyone, all the apostles, was able to speak in other tongues and tongues, uh, tongues that everybody else knew what they were saying. First, they thought they were madmen, and they said that they unlearned. This is in the book of Acts. And then they found out this was a supernatural thing. So he calls on the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost then speaks up. It's so wonderful. You got it going on, saints. The Holy Ghost speaks up and said, I am a witness. You know, when you're in court and if you can prove without a shadow of doubt that you're not guilty, or even if you are guilty, if you have a witness to confirm that this person didn't do this or didn't do that or whatever, don't you know you can win your case? Okay, listen. The Holy Ghost come and say, I am a witness. Now, I am uh, the Lord Jesus said, my, I took every sin upon the cross by my blood. But then, but then the Holy Ghost, he called for the Holy Ghost because there's a reason for that. He told Peter, he said, upon this rock will I build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against you. He said, whatever you bind here on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose here on earth is loose in heaven. So when I was praying, my mother's praying all these generations and her mother on down generations, there was some binding and some loosening. So when he went to, when he called on our witness, our witness could see all of that. So the Holy Ghost speaks up. I am the witness. I seen such and such praying. I seen such and such praying with supplications and fasting. And let their requests be made known unto God. I seen that this person is sold out to Jesus. I seen this person being righteous before Jesus. Wouldn't you not, wouldn't you not listen to this person cry unto you? Would you not allow the devil to take this person's soul? And then the verdict comes. And Jesus said, remember my blood. And the Holy Ghost said, remember, I'm the witness. And the devil said, yeah, but I should have him. And God the Father says, not guilty. Praise God for Jesus. You're not guilty because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So my brother was spared, not because he was righteous, not because he was doing what was right, but because there was some binding and some loosing going on. And because God sent that angel to sermon to erase and to put in what we were praying for. And it lasts from generations to generation. You know, I'm getting excited. Now, you guys know that, right? 
Now that's I'm bringing. I'm telling you all this because this is about Ruth. Ruth was a mocha knight. Mocha knights came from Lot family. Do you remember the story about Lot when he was over by Solomon Gomorrah and he married one of those women over there? And um, God talked to Moses and said, can I keep anything from him? Because he was a righteous man. See, that's the same thing. When you pray and you intercede, will God keep anything from you? No, you know what you're praying for. God showed me that in the atmosphere. Amen. He said, I'm going to uh, destroy Solomon and Gomorrah. And then he began to plead, when, if, it's, if it's 50 people, Lord, will you destroy it? No, I won't destroy it. If it's 50 people over there righteous. He went all the way down to 10. And he said, they couldn't find not even 10 people to be righteous in um, Solomon and Gomorrah. And we come, we come trying to come to that now, but too many intercessors, too many prayer warriors. Amen. So that's why the city was destroyed. But some angels came because Lot was over there, his nephew. See, when you're praying for your family and loved ones, if your family's in an area where they shouldn't be, you can pray them up out of there. That city may not make it, but your family will. And even if they did not escape, you know that they sold in spirit, made it into the kingdom of God because you prayed for them. And you know that they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So now, uh, this is what happened. They left. An angel came. They, it was so demonic until the people wanted to have, you know, a unnatural affection with, um, with the angels because they didn't know there was angels. And uh, they tried to come through the door. And the angel said, stand back, Lot. Stand back like he was going to give his virgin wives to him. Stand back. And they, he stru they struck him blind. God will strike the enemy blind because your family or because you prayed. And they will make a way for them to escape. They probably don't deserve it. But because you prayed, God will make a way for them to escape. Now, I'm telling you, I've seen this. Now, this right here. Now, I don't know if you call this a way of escape. I do believe that was all these holes in this shirt. That's a way of an escape. Don't you think so? And do, don't you think that by this shirt being uh, buttoned up and bullets coming up against it, that that must have been a way to escape? Now, let's go on back to Ruth. She come from the Mocha Knights from Moke, and his wife was uh, uh, familiar with that kind of spirit because what they uh, did over there, they had a, a natural affections with animals. They was having a, a natural affection with man with man, woman with woman. They was a murderers. They were thieves. They was just everything. It was like the dark ages. It was horrible during that time. Well, he fell in love with the wife. He had two children. So the Lord gave him, gave the angel, angels gave, um, Lot, some instructions. Now, I'm talking about the Mocha Knights, and this is where Ruth come, come in at. Gave them uh, 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 instructions. Do not turn back when you leave this city. Well, she turned back. She turned to a pillow of salt. His daughter and them left, and they thought that they were the only people on the face of the earth. They, that's what, they really thought that. They, the oldest one said, let's get our father drunk, and let's have children so that we can replenish the world. So she had incest and she had a son. This is where the Mocha Knights come in. Came from a lineage of incest. So I want you to know this right here. Can something good come, come out of a Mocha Knight? And let's go on. So now Ruth is Naomi's daughter-in-law. Her Ruth, uh, Naomi's father, um, uh, husband died. And her husband died. And then she also had another daughter. And his son died. She had two sons. Now, so she tells him, she said, you go on in. We're in chapter one. And uh, she said, uh, go on back home. Return to your other people because I cannot give you no more sons. 
And, and Ruth chapter 1, verse 60, and Ruth said, And treat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For where thou goes, I will go, and where thou launch, I will launch. My people shall be my people, shall be my people. Thou people shall be my people, and my God, your God, my God. So she said, wherever you go, I got five minutes, wherever you go, I want to go too. So that's what she said. So she went along with her and she ended up marrying Boaz. Boaz is the lineage of King David, which if you go all the way down, it goes all the way down to the tribe of Judah, which is through Jesus. Jesus came back through through the lineage. So that's one way. She overturned that situation by saying, I don't want to leave you, Naomi. Your God is my God. So when you cling to somebody who knows the Lord, you will reap the benefits thereof. And then there was Hannah. She cried out also. She wanted to, she was barren for a long time. This is the book of Samuel chapter 1, 2, 22 and 20 and verse and chapter 2, 1. And she vowed a vow. And this right here was also overturned because she could not have no children. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of, of hosts, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaid and, and remember me and not forget thou handmaid, but will give unto thou handmaid a man child, then I will give him uh, life. And he, she was, in other words, she said, I will never put no razor to his head. And then she said, I will give him back to you. And this is Samuel. See, she overturned it. And she was not rash with her words in the book of Ecclesiastic. It says here, Ecclesiastic uh, chapter uh, uh, five verse two, be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God in uh, don't in heaven or in because God is in heaven and you up on earth. Therefore, let thy words be few and said and Ecclesiastes five, four. And when thou followest it vow unto God, defer not to pray it for he has the pleasure uh, in fools. He has not no pleasure in food. Pray pay that which thou has vowed. In other words, when you make a vow to God, you do exactly what you said to do. And this is what Hannah did. Hannah prayed, if you give me a male child, I will give him back to you. And that's which is the great, one of the greatest uh, prophets of all time, Samuel. And so uh, 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 the judge, King Solomon, I call him the judge of the preacher. He said, when you do this, don't be hasty what you say, because God is in heaven and you are earth and he's listening to everything you say. And when you make a vow, keep it, keep your vow unto God. I had said when I was praying and my mother too, we will always serve you and teach our children the right way to do things in the things of God. I have kept that vow and God listened to everything that I had said praise God and then also the prodigal son he was on his way out of here he took the money he said father give me my inheritance he go to the far country and he did just that and he lost everything he had and he thought about it he said I have a father that owns so much land and have everything here. I'm eating uh, uh, pig's food. He said, I will go back to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. But his father was waiting on him. Praise God is waiting on you. And as he was coming back for all the sins that he had done, his father met him, put a ring on his finger, put a robe on him and gave on him a big party. Are you one of those people? God can overturn, overturn, overturn. Your case can be appealed. Just call on Jesus and know that he will. Pass the Gloria, the prayer warrior. Get ready for the great things that's going to happen for the United States of America. If all of us stick together as prayer warriors, don't work, don't look at the colors of where you come from, or denomination, or religious spirit. Just call on Jesus, because you don't have to have no religion, no religion spirit. You don't have to be no uh, uh, to no denomination. God sent His word, and up on this rock shall I build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. 
How could he say that? Because he's the one that holds the keys to hell itself. So whatever you bind here on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose here on earth is loose in heaven. We're loosened right now. Love, joy, peace, and you happiness. And we bind sickness, health, death in the name of Jesus. And I can- Listening to Pastor Gloria, the prayer warrior of our Lord, our Righteousness House of Prayer. For more information or prayer, call 310 310- 418-8189. 310-418-8189.